Honest, J. Nowak. Oh yeah. A pleasure to me all at last, and welcome back to Flying with the Foam on HJN. And now, what I'm going to be doing for today is, simply put, going a lot smaller. Because, after all, I've talked about the Raptor Strike recently. I've also talked about the Phoenix, the Fossa, and quite a few others within the past week or so. But now, it's time to go really small, but not as small as possible. Not yet. Number 637. The Doomlands Holdout. Now this is what you can call small. This may not be the smallest blaster ever in Nerf history. It also may not be the smallest blaster that I have in the entire collection of mine. The Kaiji Force Neo related history. But this is in fact still a small blaster if you're looking for a nice little alternative to some of those huge gigantic blasters out there like the Modulus ECS-10 or the Mega Mastodon or the Ultra 3. This one here for a single shot blaster with some nice sort of priming rod action as basic as it sounds. It still does pack quite a bit of punch because you probably heard about it but I am sitting about 10 feet away from a few big fluffy couch cushions and this dart that came out of this blaster hit them pretty hard so I could probably imagine that shooting them on a range test at some sort in the future could probably mean that this blaster does get some nice ranges put into it but overall the blaster itself it's still quite a bit of fun to talk about because after all, Doomlands 2169 is basically Hasbro's version of a story of a dystopian future at some point. That could potentially happen within the next few centuries. But Doomlands 2169 as a whole certainly does hold a lot of nice qualities to it, regardless of the story itself. Regardless of the origin, regardless of the plot, regardless of the things that are used generally within the storyboard behind this little creation that Hasbro went ahead and did years back. So, I will say that for sure, because this is a Doomlands blaster, there are certainly a few nice qualities and looks to it. Not to mention the functionality. First of all, the nice sort of darkish orange along with the regular kind of orange that Nerf generally uses right here. It's not as yellow as the modern day Alpha Strike series, but this probably still was as yellow as you could probably get on an actual Nerf blaster, unless of course you were looking for a few occasional pop-ups that would happen over time. This also comes with its own little scope on the top. Not much of a sniper as scope as maybe the Phoenix, or maybe some of the others that I've seen throughout my time. But, again, this probably makes for a good starter. Little pistol S scope that you might find on any real handguns. Of course, it's uncommon, but it is an option that you could put on there if you so chose to do so. Also, you can never forget that on this side of the blaster especially, there are these little transparent segments that showcase how the blaster is functioned. In this case it's just simply a priming rod action to where you pull it back and the plunger tube fills up, air fills inside and then when you pull the trigger it's all released propelling the dart up to an incredible distance at some point. Though I will say for sure that this one right here seems to do pretty good at showing us how this black rubber O-ring over here tends to do a pretty good job at slowing the amount of tension that seems to take place when the priming rod ends up returning to its original phase. Before being pulled and then after being pulled, the rubber O-ring tends to slow it down so this way it does not in fact go through any sort of damage. So, 
So, overall, it's pretty good. One tactical rail, one barrel, one priming rod, one grip and a trigger, and one little set of functionalities. I seem to be obsessing over the number one with a blaster like this, but I will also point out really quickly that a blaster like this certainly does have a lot of nice features and qualities to it. And being that it is in fact the smallest blaster that we got in the Doomland series as a whole, the holdout certainly does hold its own. Literally. But in any case, that's pretty much all that I got for today. But if you want to see more, go down on my channel. Make sure to like, subscribe, comment, follow me on social media, and stay on the Hollywood side.